a couple of key ideas that I'm going to transmit today, okay, around in the transformation, but I want to make this real for you. And I want to actually put some flesh on the bone of this for you so you understand the, the evidence base, you understand the thinking, you understand my research and, and why we ultimately do this. Any aspect of iron wall, a key litmus test for me is you need to be able to answer the question, why? And you need to have done deeper systematic thinking to understand that. So I like to take a data-driven approach and be systematic about it. Why is it that we talk about the inner world? Why is it that we need to change our beliefs and the way we see the world? If we aren't where we want to be, why is it imperative that we do this? Okay, so I'm going to give you a, like, a brief but hopefully um, expansive whistle-stop tour of kind of like the ideas that shaped how I think in terms of the inner world. Okay. I'm just going to let Jeff in again. Okay. So, uh, yeah. You'll know my journey. Yeah. And you'll know the kind of changes I, I had to make to essentially arrive where I am. We'll just get this view. Yeah. That's a bit better for me. Can you, you, you can still see the screen, guys. Is that right? Let me just check in. See the screen? Russell Trevor, cool. Okay, cool. So, all right. When we're going through this, right, there was a few really important ideas that shaped me. Yeah? One of which was this book, The Biology of Belief, okay, by Bruce Lipton who is a, um, I think he's a biochemistry researcher, um, very smart guy, who talks about how our beliefs and how we think and feel actually influence how our body functions, our cell cellular health, our level of physical energy, and the outcomes that we receive in this world. As I really grappled with the ideas of this book, and importantly, tested them, like literally aggressively for years, gathered data on every idea that I'm going to put to you today. Okay. I'm going to tell you stories and, and explain to you how they work. Okay. And, and because I've recorded everything in my journey, it's public. You can see it. So the evidence is in front of you. So you can ask me questions. You can challenge me on anything anything you want, because I've lived it, I've done it for 14 years, and I know it, okay? And what I need to get to you, I need to get through to you, is to take it a bit more seriously than you are, because there's untapped potential here, and there's tools and tricks you can use that will improve your game. So it's my job to implement this into your life now in a structured, systematic way. We're going to agree by the end of this call, we'll co-create, and there's actions we're going to set for everyone. And then we do the work in the group, as you know. So in the biology of belief, Dr. Lipton talks about um, how our consciousness interfaces with our biology. And as I did more research into fixing my physiology, I used to be very obese. I used to suffer from a lot of brain issues, brain fog, um, a lot of issues with memory, concentration, focus, ADHD, depression, anxiety, just a lot of stuff, okay? And I went down the road of just really working on my biology in order to reverse those issues. That was informed by not only this guy, but also the work of this guy, Dr. Jack Cruz, okay? This guy who talks about Light, water, magnetism. This guy's a, a literal genius. He's a brain surgeon who, after injuring himself, um, having a slipped meniscus, realized that actually the... Yeah, super. That's what I'm talking about, Zach. Understood that a lot of the paradigms that we have in 
modern bricks and mortar medicine, we're not supporting it. Okay. So he talks about the big six healers. These are built into iron rock. Yeah. These things are things that we do in iron rock. Everyone's supposed to be doing this. Everyone. All of you here, if you're doing iron will, you're doing these. If you're not doing these, you're not doing iron will. That fucking simple. That simple. Okay? These things don't cost much at all. But they're the most powerful things that I've experimented with. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you through everything I experimented with, why I handpicked these things. Now, let me go through this. Sunlight. You know what? why that's super powerful, right? It activates and reinvigorates and uh, rejuvenates our mitochondria. The better your mitochondria are, the better your life is going to be. The more energy and function you've got, the more clarity you've got, the more ability to sustain the stress responses of, of life, the clearer your thinking is, yeah? the more confident you are. Unfluoridated water, okay? So that's kind of the um, fluid that enables the reactions of life to occur, okay? It's the... Um, river of life that facilitates electron chain transport we we put in environmental toxins and things that kind of like um, bind to our receptors like uh, fluoride and heavy metals and whatnot um, our body becomes a lot less efficient and we lose our edge magnetism ground to earth earth is the highest source of electrons you are supposed to be doing some form of earthing as part of this program okay it could be five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. It's a cumulative thing. And again, seafood and DHA, um, the, the, the kind of a formula for this that you need to remember is that DHA acts as a captures mitt for light and it transmutes light that your photoreceptors are receiving into a signal that um, allows our mitochondria to be invigorated because as, it interface, as, as cells that are bathed in DHA, interface with the light, it produces something called DC electric current, which is how nature regenerates things and how our nervous system actually regenerates. And look at these last two that he talks about. Self-confidence and friendship. Ain't that funny? Ain't that funny? Yeah. In this model of the organism, yeah, Dr. Jack and many other thinkers like him recognize that how we feel influences how our biology functions. Researchers and very smart people like uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton acknowledge the same thing. As you look around the holistic space, yeah, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper into this. And you can um, look at other work, like the work of Dr. James Sana. Yeah. This guy. Yeah. People, he was a, uh, like a, um, a surgeon. Okay. Who, um, he actually worked on back pain. Very interesting guy. I recommend you check his work out. Yeah. So, doctor, of course, a medical doctor. Okay. But um, why I like Dr. Jacksano and why he made a big contribution is he would have a clinic where there'd be patients who'd come to him for like decades who, despite all the surgeries, despite all the interventions, just couldn't improve in their symptomology. They were not getting better. Okay. And him being a dedicated researcher and a fucking scientist, tested. This is why I like him. Open-minded, tested. Listen to other people. Listen, look to how other people are doing it in other parts of the world. And because he, he's a very smart person, he wondered, what if I try this? What if I try this? And he began to like ask his patients who were problem patients who weren't getting results. Because he had a cohort were getting far better and they were good. Huh? They do a bit of rehabilitation, they're fine. No issues, they don't come back. Then there's a subset of the population who don't get better. What do those people all have in common? Emotional issues, trauma, baggage in their psychology, inner world. Where their cognition is day in, day out. How they see the world, oh, fucking hell, this is stressful, this is difficult. Scarcity, lack. Yeah. So... When he would start to give these clients like psychotherapy, he did like groups like this, like I do. He did groups like this where he'd put on these lectures like I do. I'm informed by these people. And it was that that led to remissions of these things. It was creating a group dynamic and just speaking to people and coalescing around ideas. 
There'd be people who had like chronic back pain for 10 years. You'd come to one lecture and that was it. Their, their body and their biology reorganized itself and began to heal. And when you look at what people who are uh, like uh, Bruce Lipton are talking about, when you look at the work of like Dr. Jack Cruz, when you look at like how light and biology and thought sculpts life, you'll see that just by changing how we see things, we activate different uh, tremendously powerful healing pathways within our body, right? And you can see this again and again, and again, and again. How much research I've done, you know, you spent 14 years doing this like I did, yeah? I can tell you all day long about people who did this. Yeah, so this guy, Dr. Joe Dispenza, okay? He's a guy who has a lot of impact on people, okay? Why is he interesting to me? Dr. Joe Dispenza found himself having some uh, really significant back pain. He had a, a incident where he was in a car accident and uh, wasn't recovering. He used creative visualization when he sat there, hopeless in his hospital bed, to just mechanically, step by step, visualize in his mind his spine recovering, his tissues in his body becoming strong again, and his body healing. Just visualize it. Yeah. And mechanisms in his body were turned on, healing responses were turned on, and he got better. Okay. And he learns about the underlying mechanisms of healing. Yeah. Because fundamentally, whilst there's many ways up the mountain, what you need to do is find what resonates with you. And we're going to go through some things in this call and then implement and test. You know what I mean? Yes, Zach. So you get it. Many of you guys are on my save wavelength, which is why you're here. You know what I mean? And importantly, I've tested these things and literally... We'll show you in the next few slides what the outcomes were. Okay. Um, so that's another one that I really like. Okay. To, to just give you some evidence based for these ideas. Other people um, who I studied under, John Gabriel. This can be quick. I'm going to wrap up the section now. Um, but John Gabriel, uh, for weight loss, right? This guy, yeah, lost 100, you know, that's like 200 odd pounds, 250, 225 pounds without dieting by using visualization. Literally what John did, and I was in his program for a while. I learned a lot from him, actually. What he did, he just created an image of himself as a lean person. And all he did, every morning and every night, he looked at that image for like five minutes. Yeah. And just burned it into his mind. Embodied it. My body's lean. My body's effortlessly lean. I've got abundant energy. I've got abundant health and vitality. Life is ease and flow and grace. He brainwashed himself and went from people who are this obese, you know, this guy failed with every form of intervention. He, he was working with Dr. Atkins, failed, couldn't lose a pound. He went through, he, he spent like his life savings multiple times over to lose weight. Couldn't, he got fatter and fatter and fatter. You can read his story. It's very interesting. Okay. Until he reaches a point because he's smart. He's an intelligent guy. He's uh, running a successful business and pumping it all into how to lose fucking weight because when you haven't got health, then nothing even matters. When you haven't got wellness, when you haven't got a happy mind, then nothing even matters, no matter what you achieve. Then one day he realizes and pulls his car over and says, what if I can't get to the next level in my health because my body's not ready to let go of all this weight? And it's that thinking that allows him to be open-minded to new ways of being, Okay. I really stress this, open-mindedness. All the people that I've just showed you, they went through the gamut of trying to fix things, of trying to improve, of trying to heal, of trying to solve their patients' issues, and they saw that my patients aren't getting better, I'm not getting the results, something's wrong. Okay? And then, as if by magic, the right answers start to come together. Everyone who's in this group with me knows that I've got things and I've been, been through a process that are going to benefit you. That's why you're here, to get results, to get outcomes. Whether it's building your game design business, whether it's building your personal brand, whether it's scaling your agency income, you know that there's 
things within this approach that are going to get you there. Hence, you resonate. Okay. So, introducing the mind body approach, then, where you are now, okay, where you are now, here's the thing, okay, you have to ask yourself this and ask yourself frankly, okay. Here's the thing. Honestly, what do you want? What type of partner? How do you want to feel? What impact do you want to make? How do you want to be thinking about yourself? How do you want to be feeling? Okay. You have to get clear, clear, clear on this. Okay. You have to know what kind of partner do you want sitting next to you as you go through this life? How do you want to feel? Do you want an abundance of energy? How do you want to see yourself? Do you want to love yourself? Do you want to see yourself as a powerful person? Okay. Do you want freedom? Do you want to have influence? Do you want to have impact? Okay. You have to ask yourself this and be ruthlessly honest. Because within that, you'll see. You'll understand there's gaps between where you are and where you want to be. You'll see that, okay? The, the honest dialogue that you have with yourself is one of the most powerful conversations you're ever going to have in your life. So I invite you to do it. The honest, most transformative things I ever did in my life was looking myself honestly in the mirror and saying, do you want to die like this? Do, do you want to live like this? If not, what do we need to change? And the answer when I did that exercise was this. It was always this. It's always been that. It's this. It's the way you see yourself. It's the way you move through the world. That allows you to close the gap. To give you the function and performance that it takes. Frankly speaking, I believe in performance principles. I believe in people, I believe certainly in men. It's our responsibility to have the highest level of energy and function and capacity that we can possibly have as people. It's our responsibility. That is what enriches the lives of our families. That is what enriches the lives of our children. That is what we need to embody to be husbands, to be fathers, to be leaders. It's our responsibility to, what, to be our best. Okay. So there's two sides of this. Part of it is being that leader, being that lion. And part of it is also being that sage, being deeply present, deeply present in this life and able to invest energy in others, building your team, building your tribe, building your community. Okay. That is where we find our strength and potential. And as you honestly ask yourself that, I want you to see what comes up. When I did this, I, I learned a lot about my inner world, the stormy, naughty challenges that were in it. And then I proceeded to do something about it, which is what takes us to our point here. Okay. I've lived this. I've actually gone through this. You're going to get what you subconsciously believe you deserve. And your intent matters a lot. Okay. If you want an abundance of mental clarity and energy function, abundance of confidence to, to remove your anxieties, to remove your lack of self-love, all these things, okay? Upon honest reflection, you have to just be clear, I want this. You have to put that intent out there. I, I want far better brain function. I want far more social freedom. I want far more attractive partners in my life, whatever. You have to have that nailed down, and put that into the ether. When I did this, I was 29. This is what I looked like. That was me. As you may know already, if you've seen this, that was me. Yeah, just, just check, check this out because uh, this can sometimes be quite raw when this hits people. That used to be me. I lived most of my life like this. 
29 years, I looked like this. 29 years, I went through the world looking like this. That was my reality. And had I not woken up, had I not decided that I was going to be someone in this world, this is still how I would look to this day. Okay? A fat, obese being who was a cauldron of suffering, who despite the veneer of a smile, despite the happy-go-lucky personality, underneath all of that was just pain, misery, lack of self-love, limiting beliefs. And what I've got to tell you today is your results in the world, in this life, are just a mirror. Everyone here, <laughs> if you haven't got the energy that you want, if you haven't got the clarity, if you haven't got the mood, if you haven't got the abundance, if you haven't got the network and tribe, that is purely a mirror of what's going on within you. And when you change things within you, how you function and operate, then those things will change. How do I know? Because I fucking did it. Most people, if they get to this point where they've not been on a date, where they're a virgin, where they're literally in cell, they identify that they're in cell, where they're just broken, there's no hope for them, they stack up at the bottom of society. And it tends to be quite a difficult place to get out of when you've just been sinfully untouched and just, I had so many issues, brain fog, anxiety, depression, thyroid issues, chronic fatigue syndrome, insomnia, I was just fucking destroyed. Three years later, yeah, I uh, don't look like that anymore, do I? Three years later, no one would ever guess that was me. Three years later, I have an abundant life. I've done all these things. I've put on these events. I've done all this shit. I'm a leader. I've changed. I've transformed my life. I've transformed the lives of other people. For all intents and purposes, I'm an example of a success story from literally dirt and nothing, defeated nobody, to becoming the king that I am today. How did I do it? It was pretty simple. I had to plug the gap between where I was and honestly, honestly admit that my inner world was a piece of shit. And that my self-image was poor. And I didn't believe in myself. And I didn't think I deserved good things. And I didn't think I was worthy. And, I, and I, I saw the world as scarce. I saw the world as full of rejection and fear and hostility. And didn't think people would like me. I didn't think women would want to date me. Didn't think they'd want to speak to me at all. I projected that worldview out into the world and I got those outcomes back. And when I was 29, three weeks before my 30th birthday, I was just about so sick of it that I went to work one day and realized, Ravi, you're going to turn 30 in three weeks and you're still a virgin. And you're not going to make it if you keep going this way. That thought to this day was the most howling, lacerating moment of my life where I realized that if I didn't do something, then I was going to get to the end of my days and have totally failed at living my dream. That galvanized me into action to simply find a mentor and coach and do whatever it takes to be better. I didn't know if I could make it. I didn't know if I was going to be successful. I didn't know if my dreams were even physically possible at that point, given the situation I was in. But I knew there will simply be no more determined and relentless human being who will ever come to the space of self-improvement than me. And I will simply get up and try and try and try and not stop trying until I'm dead, buried, and gone. I made a commitment. It was cast iron. Three years later, the vision that I had in my eye, I did it, man. I lost my weight, got my confidence, built my business. 
I'm changing people's lives. I'm delivering a service that captures everything that I've learned over a 14 year journey to bring human beings to their highest potential. And I do it with passion, love, gratitude every day of my life. My life is badass. And I can't believe I'm here living my dream. Why? Because, so it turns out that a lot of this is malleable. A lot of this can be changed. A lot of this comes down to your mentality and mindset. And how you see yourself in the world. What you subconsciously believe you deserve, you're going to get. There are a range of tools I used to change this around, which we're now going to do a bit of a live demonstration of before we go into sharing our mutual experiences. So, should be, we're not sharing screen now, is that right? Back, is it back on the main screen? Cool. Yep, okay. Yep. Good. So, the most important thing I did that put me from having no energy, having anxiety, having depression, having brain fog, having poor sleep, having inability to execute at all, you know, procrastination hell, not being able to do fucking anything for a long time to where I am now, was I just changed a few habits and I used the project manager's perspective, which was what I did as a job. I used a management science-informed approach, a data-driven approach to consistency to habitual change. The way I saw it was that my thinking, my paradigms, I felt what I'm going to now do is systematically across every facet, upgrade my mindsets, my biology, by improving my habits and the processes. And all I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is do these habits with read ridiculous consistency that's it if it fails i'm done i don't know what to do at that point but i'm willing to bet my entire future on this i've done all the research i've lived it i've done it as a job i've literally delivered big big budget projects for this just using the same ideas so either all of the edifice of management science of project management of all these engineering teams, all these um, strategists, either that's wrong and then I'm fucked or these people aren't telling the truth and if you do it and do it and do it, you get the result. So I just bet my whole future on that because there's no lower I could go. I was already at rock, rock bottom. I was already living in my, with my parents and doing fuck all apart from go to work and come back and just do the same thing every day. So I decided I'm just going to change my habits and I'm not going to stop from there. My consistency was fucking ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. And I'll, and I'll tell you what I, I had. A, I had a physical diary, yeah? And I blocked out every hour of the day. I'm not suggesting you do this because this was a very extreme case. This is what I needed. For two years, for 12 to 16 hours a day, every hour of that diary I lived it aggressively as if there was a gun pointing to my head and I, and I, and I simply didn't take, I didn't take an hour off two years Okay, when you're as fucked up as I am I was, I was going to die you know what I mean, I was a, had always had problems I'd already been close to death like twice I really wasn't going to be able to live so I had to fix it right Everything that's in Iron Will, I did. Started with a sunrise every day. Didn't miss a sunrise for two years. Didn't miss a sunset for two years. Okay. Hydration was on point. Sleep was on point. Started off without any energy. As the months went on, felt a bit better. Kept going, felt a little bit better. Felt a little bit better. Felt a little bit better. Then started manifesting in my outcomes. I've just got a promotion. Ain't that crazy? Oh, got another one. 
Okay. Now I start to believe in myself just by doing the habits and changing this. Every day, visualization, affirmations, every single day, and just getting really, really clear on where I want it to be. I'd visualize every single day of waking up on a beach, okay, of um, having a really lean, fit body and being with a beautiful partner and us watching the sunrise together and then me going and running my business and me doing well financially. I visualized that every single day for two years. It took a bit of time and work and effort, but three years later, here I am in a beautiful Puerto Escondido, Mexico, proving that you can just literally convince yourself to do this shit and you'll do it. So not only have I done it with myself, I've done this with so many other people now because when you know how to do it, it's not hard. It's really not. That, gents, is my experience up to this moment um, with belief change, with inner world work. The tools that I use up to this moment, uh, and we're going to go into more after we do a short breakout, but the tools I used for that were very simply visualization, having that strong mental image. You have to feel it in every cell of your body, guys. I can't stress how important. I, I would not be alive if I didn't do this. So it's my job to get it through to you today. It's my job to make sure you download this into your brain today and make sure you start doing it. When you sit there, it's just what I was honestly doing was prayer. It was literally prayer that my, my parents taught me when I was a kid. That if you don't know what to do, you have to pray. And I'd sit there and just build an image and sit with it and just dream that I could do it. With it, every fiber of being, because I couldn't go any lower as a human being at that point. I just sat with it. And with that intentionality, things in my biology started to rewire. Things inside of me started to shift. Rather than having like zero physical energy, I started to want to do a few things. I started to learn how much of our function and performance actually comes from where we're operating in our inner world and how a more expanded inner world can literally create an abundance of energy. I started to improve my symptoms, started to improve my sleep and started to attract better people into my life, make connections, learn things, then started to have some audacity. The more that I just literally focused on the outcome that I wanted, the abundance of energy, health, then things started to come together. I started to remember about reading Andy's journal on Good Book and Loser, about how this guy was in the same boat as I am, but then he, how we resolved it. And I had not been on Good Book and Loser for years at that point, but I remembered it. And then when I had that mental breakdown a few weeks before I turned 30, realizing I was still a virgin, I went back to Good Looking Loser and I saw, wait a minute, this dude Andy's now moderator. Oh, and he's Good Looking Loser's now dead. No one's on here anymore, but he started his own for me. So then I went on there. Then I went on his coaching program. Like I was one of his first guys, first cohort, because I knew he had something that I needed. Got my results, kept improving. Funny twist of fate, ended up being a really uh, star client of his, ended up uh, actually being a, I'm now the owner of that community. I'm the admin of the website now, and he gave it to me. I now lead it. Uh, thousands of men trust me with their development. I do it because I love it. I care about those people, so I serve them. And uh, these things, you can call them synchronicities, you can call them what they want, what you want. The people who inspired me to start this business, like Vin's in this group right now, I did this because of the ideas he put into the ether as he's running around London. Like he went from being on welfare to making his first million dollars in a year. So he was a big inspiration to me. Like he went from just living in this fucking shithole in London where he was like squatting, like in some fucking derelict building to then having a mansion in LA and doing all these things. And I reached out to him and I, and I got his mentorship just by honestly putting myself in a position where like I could just get some time and then it went from there. And uh, yeah, um, all of these things that I've unlocked is because of the diligent work 
on belief change. Yeah, that was the foundation for the transformation I made. So all of you who are here today, you've got goals. You've got things you want to do. Okay. So it's mandatory for you to look at who you want to be, what you want to accomplish, and develop a significant and strong image of that as a visualization. It's part of this program. And we're going to commit to doing it every day. And I have to keep pestering you about this because that is my job. It is my job to ensure that we're doing everything we can, leaving no stone unturned to get you your results and to get you your outcomes. And I've proven to you how, how many times I've done this. Again and again with every mentor, people who inspired me like, to, to approach women. Scotty, right? Scotty can go look and lose him. Okay. He's a friend. Like, um, I've met him, spent a lot of time with him, right? Texted him, all that. Did loads of videos together, did, did a podcast together for a while. All of these things were just from this, just from having clarity about what I want. They re literally rewire your um, neural structures, change your cognitive structures. And once you shift some things in your being, you kind of energetically align with different aspects of reality. You put your brain in a different lane and you go towards different things because you've opened it up here as a, as a pathway, as an idea, okay? And for anyone who wants to bridge a significant gap, then you have to apply these sorts of things strategically, smart, weave it into your habits. Iron Rule is all about day structure because it's the simplest way to create a winning methodology for yourself. Iron Rule is about giving people different tools and tailoring it to them and experimenting and seeing what creates the best results. Guys who've been through this program just found the answer to their formula and then they just kept doing it and then they got, where, they got what they wanted and then they moved on. They got to their income level, they got to that, you know, and, and then the, the just continued going from there. So my job, and I will uh, pass it to you, Zach, in a sec. My job is to find your tools. Yeah. Everyone here, I, I, I don't need to name names, but some of you know that you struggle with happiness. We're going to talk about that more. But some of you know you struggle with that. I struggle with that. So the solution that is to actually incorporate it, incorporate it into your structure. It has to be there every day. Your intent has to be on it. And it has to be in your visualization and it has to be in your affirmations. Depending on what you want, who you want to be, that's how you augment and change your affirmations and visualization. We're going to do this together. So the next step is an exercise where I'll guide you through it. But um, everyone who's here now, we're going to do like a bit of a 30-day challenge. Where I'm going to check in with you guys every day in the group and just remind you that this is what we're going to be working on for 30 days. A tailored visualization and series of affirmations for you and who you want to become and what you want to attract. Um, I see Zach's got his hand raised. So over to you, Zach. I'm happy to answer questions. Unmute. Yeah. I'm, uh, this brought to mind, uh, Jim Rohn has that lecture about how if you want to win your life, you got to win the day is you just live life in these 24 hour blocks. And so it's like, it's like, you can't master your day. You can't master your life. My question for you is like, uh, you touched a bit earlier on embodiment and really just uh, in visualization, right? You really have to feel it. And I remember when I was first learning visualization, that was like the big thing was like, you know, it's not just you look at this thing on your vision board you really feel yourself, you place yourself there. For me, I feel like I have become, I don't know if jaded is the right word, burned out in a sense where it's like, now I just don't have, like, I'll look at my vision board. I'll read my goals. I don't have that same level of embodiment and like really feeling it. I'm just like, ah, sure. You know, that, like, that'd be great. That's what I'm working toward. But I don't have that same, like, fire behind it like i did before how do you then next month i'm, I'm going to start some psychedelic assisted therapy which i hear really helps with embodiment yes it does but a, apart from that 
what you know, what are some things you found? Yeah, um, I'm going to demonstrate this. Uh, this is a really good question, so thank you for it. Um, so one thing that I like to do in this program is use an analogy. I'm going to flesh it out for you. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Okay. Iceberg analogy. How I like to paint the picture. Here is our conscious mind and what's floating to the surface. Okay. Here is all the things in the infinite expanse of the oceanic depth of our unconscious and subconscious mind. That is like the galaxy. That is like the solar system. The sun, the stars, the moons, it's infinitude of depth. That's the unconscious mind. And it goes on forever. The difference between you and Zach 2.0 is simply that Zach 2.0 has actualized himself more worked through more of his baggage and connected himself more powerfully to his vision, to such it feels aligned. When we don't feel aligned and really connected to our mission, and frankly, when our lower part of the iceberg is submerged in scarcity, lack, emotional trauma, baggage, that is populated for some time. When that is festering in our subconscious, then it is difficult to feel aligned and you will self-sabotage again and again and again. I'm not going to name names, but there's guys who, guys who've been stuck for some time who actually it's a relatively simple thing they need to do to get to the next level in what they're looking to do. Okay. Um, they'll recognize themselves. It's a relatively simple thing that they need to do uh, to really make significant, significant transformation change. Because the thing, the thing that they want to get is very easy for that particular person to get. Yeah? And he could have an abundance of it. Very easily. But then things called self-sabotage come in. And it's to do with the inner world and the unconscious and subconscious beliefs Thoughts that marinate in there. That for you to feel more connected, you have to work through. Okay? So this is a, this is a great question because it leads me on to what I wanted to strategically dive into. This is a multifaceted, two-pronged approach. In the short term, to start to get better at visualization, you just need to understand it's an actual skill. You need to understand that when I test things, I test like a fucking scientist. I sit there and gather the data and just see what happens. I don't have any emotions behind it. I don't, didn't work today. I throw my hands. I'll do it for a ridiculous length of time dude, before I make any conclusions. And you know that. Go read my log. Go read my journal on the forums. Read 5,000 approaches. Just, just change the opener. Then I change just something else. Then I change layer by layer. Using data, that's true, and you know that. And that's how, that's how I've learned all this shit. With visualization, it's a skill. And if you're out of practice, which you are, because I know because I read your data every day, you're not going to feel embodied. Because you, you, you have to reactivate those neural structures, and you have to ingrain them. Neuroplasticity is really important here. You have to habituate it and build neural pathways layer by layer by repetition and operant conditioning until emotionally and spiritually you can perform this. It's almost like meditation. It's a state you have to get into where you've knit your brain to perform this. Okay? So you actually have to sit there and be very patient. Every day I tried to do visualization. For, for a while, I kept failing. I do it, and I, and I couldn't visualize shit. I couldn't feel shit. And it's exactly what you're going through, Zach. Totally unembodied. You couldn't feel anything. Okay? My mentors and teachers inform me that's normal. 
have to keep showing up. Keep showing up until you... If you repeat something a few times, then your brain starts to lay down neural pathways and lay down layers of neurological learning. That's what you have to go through. You've done it before, but you haven't repeated it for quite some time, so it's submerged. Unfortunately, with mental habits, which are not physical, if you don't stay on top of it, you start to lose it, man. Whereas if you don't drive a car for a year, because it's very physical, you can get back in behind the wheels, whatever season, yeah? With these sorts of mental habits and uh, these tools and techniques, if you haven't done it consistently day in, day out, for quite some, just stubbornly show up and do it, your brain structures that are responsible for it, they've significantly atrophied. They're not totally inert and gone, but this is how it is, yeah? So, for example, a couple of years ago, I could have conversations with people in Spanish. Can I do it now? No. Didn't practice. So my wake-up call to, to you all, we have to do this every day and sharpen the sword um, in the short term. In the longer term, though, Zach, there's more we have to do. You actually have to deal with the underlying emotions, trauma, baggage, limiting beliefs, hence why I'm going to go into the next part of this, which is letting go. Yeah, and psychological healing. Okay. Um, as you repopulate your iceberg with far more abundant beliefs, yeah, then you're going to feel way more connected. You can have a cosmic spiritual experience when you do this and feel totally aligned, extremely confident. And importantly, the word that I'm going to use is trust. You can start having some fucking trust in the way the world works. That if you want something, you can get it. And that you deserve it. And that good things are coming to you. You have to it's sink into that trust. And it's a consequence of repetition, practice, and doing the longitudinal work to become simply a better and healthier human being. My job here in Admiral is to raise a mirror and for us to just look at how can we be better? How can we embody beliefs that are going to support us? You guys all know my struggles, how long I had to grapple with my image and my like sense of worthiness and all this shit just to get my dating life going. Just to do that was yes. Now we're further ahead and we can shape this more robustly. But um, yeah, dude. We'll do this for 30 days and practice it again, sharpen the sword. And then also, it's like the deeper emotional release work, you have to nail that because that's why you're not feeling aligned. The beliefs, you can't look at the world as scarce. You can't look at it as, you can't do that and be successful. Man. It never works because the reality is it's just a mirror. Yeah. All of you guys come from like the self improvement day, right? You remember when I used to have a lot of limiting beliefs and didn't think I could ever get laid? Remember that? That's why I never fucking got any success. Yeah? It's because of how I saw it. it women pick up on it. They feel the energy. You will sabotage yourself like 50, 50 steps before it even comes to that. And the same happens in business, in finance, in personal brand, health, everything. So the thing that we need to do today is actually start to reprogram and look at where are my beliefs weak? How can I be, by, by the time we do this call next month, 1% better. Just that. Just that. Because getting like 5% better in inner world is enough to like monumentally transform your life. Literally, I did it. Literally, by just getting 2% better, it was fucking night and day. Utterly transformative. Utterly transformative. And that was even after 29 years of shit. It's a simple shit that I did. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question, Zach. And we're going to get more tactical and tell you exactly what to do in your day structure as well, all right? Cool. Anyone else got any questions? No? All right. Cool. So um, the next bit of this is we're just going to do some sharing commentary. 